Hello, in this particular demo we're going to have a look at a game loop, uh, game loop class. It's uh, going to be central to our game. It'll manage the timings whereby we update our game world and then we draw it to the, the screen. So we'll, we'll explore the, the, the code fragment that everybody will um, receive. And in particular, it is within the demos.app package. And here we're interested in the game loop test and game loop test fragment, these two classes. The game loop test itself, which is the, the activity we can quite uh, simply ignore, because all it does is, is adds a fragment to it. So all of the, the fun, if you like, happens within the fragment class, and that's what we want to be uh, concerned with. But let's just run it, first of all, to see what is happening. Uh, to be honest, there's not a huge amount for this particular demo that does happen. So when it fires up, we can do the game loop test. If we run that, it says, running the game loop, check your logcat window. Uh, so it's it's outputting stuff to the actual uh, logcat itself. And now within this here, if we were to uh, open this up, this shows all of the messages that are being um, displayed. And um, we see a bunch here, you know, update and draw um, is occurring within the, the application. So what we have reported to this is that we're updating and drawing, updating and drawing at, at regular intervals. Um, now, if I were to, uh, so for example, to just quit out of this here, you'll see you get a bunch of other uh, messages that appear in the, the console or the log, uh, log cat itself. Um, they can get in the way, so we can add in a filter, uh, you know, just to just to ignore those ones. And you can filter it by whatever you want here. We'll just filter it by the um, the application name. So we only see um, any messages that are output by our particular application. In terms of the actual messages that we have here, whenever we run the program, we saw that okay, the loop's resuming. And then we're updating one, two, three. And when we paused it, we happened to be an update uh, 68. And if, if we were to, to return back uh, to our particular game, then it carries on drawing from update 70. So you can see here, depending upon the, uh, the state that the activity is put within, we either play our game um, or we, 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 we pause our game. And uh, we'll continue whenever we go back into it. So this, functionally, this is all the thing does, not particularly interesting. So let's actually have a look at, at, at how it does that. What's not particularly interesting, and nonetheless, is, is essential uh, to your game uh, in terms of being able to manage the process. So everything happens within our fragment class. We'll have a look at that. This is a type of fragment itself, it extends fragment. And you can see within this here, we are defining a game loop. Uh, so actually, we do have a class within this one here that manages the process of updating and drawing in terms of the timing behind it. And it's important, I suppose, to, to understand this particular relationship in that um, this will be a thread that is running alongside our main GUI thread. So effectively, this is a multi-threaded program. And the thread, the game loop thread itself, is the one that is responsible for managing the timings. And every so often, it may request that uh, something is drawn and do that through the GUI thread. Methods we have, we have the onCreate. So whenever we create this particular fragment, we want to also create um, the loop that will trigger the update and the draw method. This takes in a parameter. You'll, you'll see basically that's the number of updates per second that we want to target. Uh, we're only doing two updates a second here, just simply because you can see it appearing at a, a reasonable speed within the console. The rest of the stuff in terms of creating the view is fairly straightforward. We're, we're simply creating um, a simple view and adding in, you know, check your logcat window. So not really much happening there. Pause and resume. You'll notice, hopefully, from the demo that whenever we uh, pause this particular activity and fragment, the the updating itself was paused, and when we went back to it, the updating and drawing resumed. So we are ta tapping into the on pause and on resume methods, and we are pausing or resuming uh, the loop as, as appropriate whenever the, the fragment itself is paused or resumed. And that, that's a good thing to do. If we didn't do that, and we were then to go off somewhere else, our game would still be running in the background, and almost certainly we don't want that. Um, to, to happen. 
Uh, in terms of the update and draw methods, just got simply a counter so that any time that we, we do our update or do our draw, we are simply logging out uh, to the debug console. Yes, update one, two, three, draw one, two, three. And th these are, if you like, our placeholder methods. These are things that we would actually have our actual game update and our actual game draw within. Uh, so here, it's just, it's just the trigger points for us. That's, that's really all of the surrounding context. The thing that manages all of the timing is itself a class that we put within this. We could have this as a separate class if we wish to. Game loop, and it is a type of runnable object. So this is something that can run in its own thread, and we'll want that by way of managing uh, the timing. What do we have within it? We've got uh, a target number of frames per second, and this is obviously what we're trying to, to hit. We're going to have a thread object that this runnable object will piggyback on top of by way of actually becoming a thread. And we have a Boolean flag running. And when the loop is running, uh, when we are doing update and draws, this will obviously be true. And if we paused or we haven't yet started, then it's going to be false. We use the volatile keyword next to it, and that's important. If we put in volatile, what it says is that this particular value could change unexpectedly. So within one thread of control, for example, within the GUI thread, if we've signified that it is a, a volatile one, it means that even though this thread may not change it, another thread might change it. So that thread should be particularly careful about any assumptions it makes of the value. Uh, so it shouldn't cache it. It should always make sure to retrieve the actual value so it checks to see if it's using the, the latest value for it. So volatile, we need to define that at. The target step. Now, this is a, a, a value in nanoseconds, so it's a rather uh, small uh, quantity of time. And in essence, we will take the number of target updates per second, so this is updates per second, and turn that into a quantity of, of nanoseconds uh, corresponding to that particular update period. Even though it's expressed in nanoseconds, it's simply because it's, it's, it's how some of these methods work for getting the time. Milliseconds is the level of accuracy with, it, with which we will be able to work. We certainly cannot work at microseconds, never mind uh, nanoseconds. Constructor then, um, we call this, we pass in the target number of frames per second, we store that, and we then work out our, our one to the, the nine here, the, the number of nanoseconds that we have for each of our update and draws. This is our target. We are, have our run method. And whenever the, the frame, uh, whenever we resume and start it, this is what gets to be kicked off. Uh, so the run method is, is what will be uh, executed within the thread of control. This is where everything happens. And you can see down here we've got a, a bunch of variables. Now, largely these variables uh, map onto the ones that were provided within the lecture. Uh, so a lot of the theory we looked at in the lecture in terms of an algorithm that would enable us to time it, we simply see expressed in the code here. So I'm not going to go into it in too much detail because you can listen to the lecture in this one. We've got a start time, we've got an end time, we've got a sleep time uh, for how long we, we plan to sleep for, and an oversleep time if we positive value we're sleeping in, a negative value would have been woke up uh, early. Um, and we also have one additional value, which is when we first started running. So if you like, this is the, it's, it's the total amount of time that has elapsed uh, since the, the, the game commenced. Uh, we give some uh, starting values to these. So and, uh, actually, let me start run here. So start run initially is equal to the current time. So system.nano time. There's different ways of getting the time on, on a platform. And the accuracy with which the, the time comes back can vary between them. So in terms of most um, systems running Java, system.nano time is one of the more accurate measurements of time. It'll, it'll give you something that is reasonably accurate to the, the millisecond. So we're saying the start time is equal to whatever time it is at the minute. Take away our target period. Now the reason we do this is to, to, to notionally to have a start time which is one frame in the past. So whenever we run this, if we're using the start time, we don't have basically a, a value that works out to be zero in, in terms of where we're at at the minute. But notionally, it's, it's roughly about a frame in the past. And that can help with some um, maths issues if you were to extract one from the other and get zeros. 
Other than that, our start time or oversleep time, we initialize those. And we've got to try here because we might be, <coughs> beg pardon, we might be interrupted uh, in terms of the thread of control, but we're going to try to keep doing the following whilst we are running. So in other words, whilst this thread is running, keep doing the following. And if we pause, we'll, we'll exit out of this. What do we do? This is where we have our timings. We get the, the current time. We say this is our start time. We do our update and our draw, so whatever we need to do. And we then measure the end time. So this says, OK, well, how long did it take to do the update and the draw? From this, we calculate how long it is we should be going to sleep. And again, listen to the lecture notes if you want to, to understand why we're uh, calculating this particular um, value. If we have a positive sleep time, uh, in other words, we, we do have an opportunity to go to sleep, then we will go to sleep for this particular period. And, and you can see the sleep time, that this is always in terms of nanoseconds. If we want to turn nanoseconds into milliseconds, we've got to divide it by a million. Uh, so take that, divided by a million, gives us the number of milliseconds to go to sleep, which is the parameter the thread.sleep method takes. Uh, calling that, that particular um, thread will then uh, block for whatever period of time it is, and it'll be woken up by the, the operating system after its sleep period has elapsed. And we check to see again, listen to the lecture notes if you want to, just to see how inaccurate um, it, it has been. Have we been woken up on time or are we late or a little bit? early. Else we sleep, uh, set our oversleep time to zero. Now, the example we gave in the lecture notes was a little bit more sophisticated than this. It is one that, if, if need be, we would actually drop some of our update renders. Uh, so if you want, you can add that in. But for this example, we're, we're just simply uh, ignoring that aspect of it. Now, that's, that's more or less it uh, for our, our while loop. We do catch an interruption exception. We're not doing anything here. If we are interruption, we're assuming that we're not going to be. Final two methods within this particular game loop class is our pause and our resume. Now, they will be called by the fragment whenever the fragment is either resumed or paused. Uh, and resumed is, is also when it starts as well. What do we do there? We say, yes, we're running. We create a new thread on which this runnable object can piggyback and we start that thread, which kicks our, our run method here going. Whenever we're paused, a few little things, actually there's an, an interesting thing to notice here. So we set our flag to be false for saying we're not running. And we, we want to, we don't simply want to just quit at this point in time. Uh, that, that can be a little bit of an abrupt thing to do with threads. Rather, we're going to say, right, okay, whilst, uh, whilst true, um, we're going to try to join the particular thread um, of, of execution. So this, this gives us a chance to actually exit out more cleanly than not. And um, whenever we, we have joined, whenever we've cleanly removed this particular thread, then we will return at that point. Uh, so it gives a chance for, for the calling thread. Now the calling thread here could be from the GUI, could be from somewhere else. But whenever we pause it, we're not going to return from the pause until we know that actually the running thread has indeed stopped. And this, this is a clean way of, of managing that. Um, because it, it's running is equal to false, it, it will not quit immediately. It has to wait the next time it finishes its update and it's drawn and gets around. So safe way of, of exiting out of the thread. And that's it. Uh, so the code that you have here, Largely, it's good to go. You can take it. You can add in some additional bits if you want to, by way of making it a little bit more sophisticated. But in terms of basic timing, it, it serves its purpose. And hopefully it gives you a, a reasonable starting point by way of introducing uh, some timing functionality into your game.